whose idea was it to back the election up by a week uh, from October 20th to October 27th? Round so that's questioning. A Mr. Duncan, the floor is yours for six minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to our witnesses for being here this morning. Uh, one of the things that was not mentioned uh, in the opening statement uh, when it comes to Bill C-65, I think a lot of Canadians uh, are focused on one specific section that really shows, I think, the cynicism uh, that uh, the Liberals and NDP have rightfully earned from Canadians was the changing or the attempt uh, to change for this legislation the date of the election. Um, I want to go back and talk, though, um, Yesterday, the NDP leader came out and gave uh, unconditional confidence in the Liberals, and here we are 24 hours later talking about advancing what we call the NDP Liberal Pension Protection Act. Um, one of the things that uh, I had some concerns about several months ago was that former NDP MP Daniel Blakey, who was uh, in the NDP caucus at the time, and Minister Dominic LeBlanc, there were several CTV articles that said they'd been working together in conjunction of uh, bringing forward this legislation. First question is, could either of you confirm how many uh, NDP MPs or staff were briefed and provided information before the bill was tabled? Uh, I cannot can you, so you, you, at PCO, or there's, there was no, there's no record of a, any conversations or information by NDP MPs or staff? I believe your question was about the number of meetings that Minister LeBlanc had with Mr. Blakey. Any, anybody. Anybody, PCO, PMO, uh, anybody in the government that the NDP had access to in advance of the legislation being tabled. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, I don't think it'll be a surprise... Um, for you to understand, I'm not in a position to, I don't have control of Mr. Blakey's uh, timetable. I couldn't give you an assessment of the number of meetings that took place. But and, and my point about briefings is that it was very clear in the ctv.ca article back from January where he had said he'd been working very closely with the government. Uh, quote, there's been a fair amount of work done. And the headline of the article was that says the two parties have been quietly in talks to table electoral form uh, legislation before the next federal vote. My point being is, uh, is that there is, uh, you know, a coordination was clearly happened beforehand. But I want to get specifically about the consultations that you had done in advance. You talked about all the feedback you received and best practices. Whose idea was it to back the election up by a week uh, from October 20th to October 27th? So that's a pro uh, proposal in the amended bill. It, what it speaks to is really the difficulty in today's multicultural society. You have a lot of cultural and religious observances that take place during the fall. It was found that October 20th, which was the fixed date election, or is the fixed date election because this bill hasn't passed, is, uh, occurs at the same time as the Diwali Festival of Lights, which I believe is also occurring right now. Um, so the question became uh, how to find another date that better suited and di didn't have that sort of conflict. Um, what you try and do in these situations is you choose the date that is closest to the date like, you don't want to go too late into the season and get into December and heavy weather, and you don't want to go too early because that would break into so the So it was moved summer. from October 20th as proposed to October 27th. Correct. Do you track when provinces and territories are scheduled to have their own elections? Yeah, that's one of the things that is uh, brings into, and it's a very good point you raise, sir, that, you know, municipal elections, provincial elections, territorial elections are all things that need to be considered. And here's the thing about, uh, I appreciate you saying it's a good point, because here we were, we had to move off of October 20th for the reasons it meant to go to October 27th. October 27th, there's a territorial election scheduled in Nunavut, which would impact tens of thousands of electors directly by having an election day on the same day. So I don't really think Canadians buy the argument that they had to be moved solely for that reason. And just coincidentally, what would happen, though, if the election date was backed up a week, is that several NDP and Liberal MPs who are likely to lose their seats in the next election would be guaranteed their pension because they, as opposed to missing it by a day, they get over by six days by doing so. Do you not think there's some cynicism there, though? I mean, when you go and say, well, we did it for Diwali, but when there's a territorial election, another election taking place in Nunavut on the same day and was known, is that really the true reason? So just uh, to get back to the sorts of considerations that were made, one is just whether or not it would be a continuous fall election. You wouldn't want to break with summer holidays through Labor Day, so some of the days in September weren't very good. 
if we move forward a week to October 13th, then that would conflict with Thanksgiving, which I think most people would agree would not be a, a good choice. So the decision was made to make it October 27th. And I think the considerations weren't uh, anything more than trying to save their pensions and give, uh, give the class of 2019, the group of Liberal and NDP MPs that are panicking, uh, to secure their pensions. And it failed miserably because many Canadians uh, were outraged at this blatant attempt of what it was. I'm going to ask, though, in the PMO and PCO, you track correspondence that comes in from Canadians to your office, correct? Through the Prime Minister's office and, and PCO? I don't personally, but yes, it is tracked. Would you be able to provide us the volume of correspondence that came in? I'd be very curious. I know my inbox as a member of Parliament was quite full of anger and frustration from Canadians about this blatant move for securing pensions. Um, I'd be curious to know what the volume of correspondence and feedback, pushback, opposition, anger to what this was. Would you be able to provide us those numbers of how many co pieces of correspondence have been received by the Prime Minister's office Just since C65 was taken? So Just about 15 seconds here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, we will endeavour to do so. Thank you very much, uh, 